while watching Uncle Roger's reaction videos or Gordon Ramsay's Hell's Kitchen or mukbang videos on YouTube. Have you ever wondered what's inside the food you eat? The small things that eat you from the inside? I'm not creeping you out. I'm just talking about GMOs. episode, we'll be talking about genetically modified organisms or simply known as GMOs. We give you a short background or the scientific facts about GMOs. Here's Abby to discuss it for you. Hello there. Let me take you to a tour of the technicalities of GMOs. So Abby, what is GMO? What does it concern us? And how is it applicable in the Philippines? Let's first start by defining agricultural biotechnology. Agricultural Biotechnology, according to the USDA, or United States Department of Agriculture, is a range of tools including traditional breeding techniques that alter living organisms or parts of organisms to make or modify products, improve plants or animals, or develop microorganisms for specific agricultural uses. It also includes the use of genetic engineering. The application of biotechnology to agricultural crops has been promoted as an innovative advance in the worldwide endeavor to improve food security. A genetically modified crop or GM crop, also known as transgenic crops, biotech crops, or simply genetically modified organisms or GMOs, contain a gene from different species that gives the crops new traits such as resistance to certain insects or herbicides, increased drought tolerance, or enhanced nutritional value. Asia, being the center for agricultural production, has a pivotal role in the development and progress of food biotechnology on the international scale. Within Asia, the Philippines is one on the front lines of agrobiotechnology movement. Oh, I know a fact! Remember that the Philippines is one of the first countries in Southeast Asia to endorse the commercialization of GM crops and approve genetically modified crops for food and feed. Yes, that is true. As an agricultural country, the Philippines welcomed the concept of agricultural biotechnology to alleviate the country's growing problem of poverty, hunger, and malnutrition. Now that we know about the basic information of GMOs and the involvement of the Philippines as an agricultural country, here's Tanya to discuss the brief history of GMOs here in the Philippines. Did you know that Filipino farmers used to fear that all of their efforts invested in planting corn would be put to waste because of a pest called a corn borer? These corn borers were a problem all year round. And they were the biggest fear of the people who relied on their cornfields for profit. But thanks to the development of GMOs back in 2003, the Philippines was the first country to ever allow the commercialization of weedy corn, or the genetically modified version of the said crop. It was structured to be resistant to these corn borers, which affected most of the corn fields in the country. After the success of weedy corn, our country also started producing genetically modified versions of crops like eggplant, cotton, and even rice. At present, Agricultural lands are starting to decrease because of industrialization, which makes biotechnology more necessary to meet the food supply and demand of the country. So JV, can you elaborate further on GMOs produced by the Philippines? In the Philippines, there are several GMOs produced, which include golden rice, BT eggplant, and BT corn. Oh, I think I've heard what golden rice is. As far as I know, it is tasked to combat vitamin A deficiency. Am I right? Yes, that is right. It was made to address the ever-prevalent issue of malnutrition. This is because it contains beet carotene, a precursor of vitamin A. As for the GMOs of BT corn and BT eggplant, it is incorporated with a kind of bacteria that helps promote the growth of the plant. Are these products the one that includes pest resistance? 
Actually, yes it is. The bacteria Bacillus thuringiensis that is incorporated in the corn and eggplant helps the crop to have insect resistance. Additionally, since it is an improved version of the original crop, its yield and viability for the market also increases. Which then helps to combat malnutrition and hunger. Am I right? Yes, you are! Despite the positive impacts of GMOs, you might be wondering, are there any issues with regards to GMOs? Here's Nikki to answer that for you. Some critics and scientists continue to question the viability, safety, and intention of the production of GMOs in our Philippine society, and the approval of this type of biotechnology in our nation has brought major effects on our Philippine society, such as the actions and protests done by critics and those who are in opposition. How could it possibly have the opposition when its goal is to increase profits and help those work in the Philippine agricultural sector to produce in the long run. Well, it does not entirely benefit those in the agricultural sector because it has serious ramifications for organic and non-GMO farmers that face economic harm due to lost markets or decreased crop values. The financial burden associated with the GMO contamination is significant. So you mean to say that the approval of GMOs by the government is somehow sketchy or a doubtful decision because it does not benefit everyone? Somehow, yes, because the, the despite the efforts of critics and scientists to fight for further research, those in authority still chose to approve this biotechnology because of the increased profits it can bring our government which would greatly benefit those in authority and those who have approved it. How exactly did the critics react to the government's approval on GMOs? As expected, they responded negatively in the form of violent attacks. Back in 2013, when the testing of the Golden Rights was ongoing, the protesters specifically broke through the security and uprooted and trampled the rice plants. Hence, it has indeed proven that it brought societal gaps to farmers and protesters to react that way. Exactly. And despite the approval of the government on GMOs and many years have already passed since then, they still continue to bring awareness on how GMOs continue to affect our Philippine society through their online platforms such as their social media accounts. Knowing the benefits and issues of GMOs, especially here in our country, we now proceed to the real deal here. Do we agree with the presence of GMOs here in our country? We would say yes. Why? First, the Philippines as a developing country is recommended to use both organic farming and genetically modified crops. Second, our farmers are more concerned with the quantity and profit of their crops over its quality. Third, regarding its disadvantages such as development of food allergies, resistance to antibiotics, and synthesis of toxic substances, as of 2013, it has not been proven that these disadvantages are from products of genetic modification. To support our stand regarding the wide acceptance of GMOs, we present a plan of action which can further our advocacy. First and foremost, we urge the national government to allocate more funding in the research and development of GMOs. This is the root cause of all the allegations surrounding this biotechnology. By providing the necessary financial resources, this can further advance the studies of GMOs, which can achieve its maximum safety possible in its production, which can also eliminate the fear of relying on GMOs. Aside from the enrichment of knowledge regarding this biotechnology, we can also use the results of the research as the basis of legislations and state policies. It is undeniable that the country's Department of Agriculture's decisions must be backed by science. An essential which the current chairperson of the Senate Committee on Agriculture, Sinja Bilyar, undervalues. If we present scientific evidence, we can influence the legislators to enact laws in the line with the outcome of the studies. The scope of conducting a well-financed research on the effects of GMOs will not only stop in the enactment 
of legislation. As a mainly agricultural country, committing to the development of this biotechnology can also fuel our economy. It is a fact that the country is capable of surviving by relying solely on our agricultural sector industry. We have vast natural resources and millions of farmers who dedicate their lives in farming. We truly have the basics covered, but we lack the government support in turning our agricultural trade and industry as the main drive of our economy. Currently, the human labor is our or human labor is our main source of income as a nation, from OFWs to laborers found in factories. By researching and developing GMOs, we can prove that we are more than capable of producing enough crops which will meet local and international standards. The economic impact of GMOs is not only macroeconomic. Under the microeconomic lens, this will also lift the farmers who belong to the lowest socioeconomic class from poverty. It is a well-known fact that farmers are one of the most hardworking laborers in the country, and yet they are unjustly compensated. If the government acknowledges their significance in our economy, then instead of allowing transnational companies to exploit and selfishly benefit from our natural resources, they will promote local businesses to expand their reach to the global community. The main problem here lies on who earns more in crop production, and it's usually the big companies who buy farmers' lands for their businesses while unfairly paying them for their labor. By empowering our agricultural sector with the help of biotechnology, we can allow farmers to sell crops for their personal profit. This will then magnify their earnings and increase their quality of life. The issue regarding poverty-stricken farmers is also not the only issue we can address regarding poverty alleviation. The country is experiencing overpopulation where the urban cities are crowded with millions of people and there is an alarming growth of people as well. While there might not be an evident food shortage, most families from the lowest socioeconomic class usually do not earn enough money to provide food on their tables. If our agricultural sector is efficiently and effectively fueled by our local farmers, the prices of crops will also reduce since the supply and demand will both increase. Truly, by simply improving and allocating more resources in the research and development of GMOs, we can achieve great links as a nation. Our group also shows strong support towards Filipino scientists of different expertise. We firmly believe that national decisions shall be backed by science and studies. There are a lot of unappreciated scientists and researchers who choose to leave the country for better opportunities. It is high time for us as a country to value science because it provides us better solutions to the current problems of the society. Should GMOs be utilized in the society?